Here we are again! Keep doing that. We're going to talk about this particular magazine in this in this issue. This um, what what number are we on as far as podcasts are concerned? We don't know, do we? No, no. So no. welcome to podcast J League, no J Soccer Magazine podcast number question mark. Uh, we know about this magazine now. This is issue three. Yes. And what's issue three all about? We've got this lovely picture of Mia Mojo on the front. What's it all about? Yes. Yeah. Well, as you can see, we've got Sunia Sumimoto on the front and uh, inside. Uh, Sune retired actually in uh, December. So we go back and look at his career with lots of lovely pictures of actually all pictures that I've taken over the years, mm. uh, which he kindly gave me permission to look at. So Miyamoto Suniasu was captain of Japan in 2002 and 2006 World Cups, if you don't remember him. He was the guy who wore the mask. Yes. That's what made him famous in the end, uh, surprisingly. So, uh, Suniyasu Miyamoto, we have Miss uh, Homara Sawa, who picked up the golden ball, but we won't go into that now, shall we? Uh, we have what about a, Cerezo? A brief history of Cerezo Osaka, mm. including that great picture of uh, Kiyotake. So I was and is he going to be, I mean, he's the next big thing to, the next big export to I the I think, tax. unfortunately, he will be the next big And where's export. he going to go? Which clubs are likely to, to want to buy him? Or who's been sniffing around? Well, to be or honest, who's been allegedly sniffing around? Allegedly sniffing around, even last year, uh, the likes of Manchester City, even uh, Leicester City, Leeds United, Crystal Palace, Birmingham City have all had a look at him, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, but because he's only a lad playing for the Olympic team, he's, he's actually played three or four games for the national team now. And Japan players, uh, being outside the EU, can't get work permits unless they've played 75% of the last two years' national team games. So he's not going to get in the Premier League this year. Yeah, but Arsenal unless, got around him. Exactly, unless you've Tell got they do Arsene Wenger's lawyers to have a mm. go at it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Mia Ichi Ryo, uh, he hasn't played any times for the national team yet. Yeah. But uh, special talent, as Mr. Wenger called yeah. it. And he, he got the uh, work permit at the second time of asking. But Kiyotake, sorry, I didn't ask your question. Nuremberg, Germany. You're getting him. Did you know that? Did you know that? You do know. Really? You really believe that? I believe that Nuremberg in August i.e. before the next season, uh, he'll be picked up. Um, there are rumours that Usami, featured on the cover of issue one there, who's playing for Bayern Munich, but not very often right now, will also be there at Nuremberg with him. And Inui, who's at Bochum right now, also mm. playing for Bochum Juniors or second team, whatever you want to call it. You German people might be able to tell me more. He's also expected to go to Nuremberg, so I think Nuremberg is going to be the Japan B team. <laughs> wow. Actually, the A team. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, lot of Japanese players going to Germany as opposed to England and the yeah, UK. Yeah, it's very easy for them to go to Germany. Uh, Why is that? Is that a work permit situation? Yep, there is uh, less of a problem with the work permit. They're also uh, the biggest agent in Japan, JSP, Japan Sports Promotions, has some very long-term, uh, easy, convenient contacts mm. with a guy called Thomas Kroll in Germany. And uh, I think uh, there's a bit of uh, collaboration going on there where it's like... Uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say, well, if, if you don't let him come with me, then I'm not taking your other players. But uh, I'm some of that pretty on, sure that JSP mm -hmm. are basically taking either the easy way out, because mm. it's Germany, and they've got a guy there already, or they're taking the way that they have to go, because otherwise they'll lose other business, I'm not sure. But that is definitely another story, isn't it? Yeah, and it's very complicated, so we've got go there for now. <laughs> but back to Cerezo for a moment. Um, do you see them as a kind of MK Dons? Of the uh, of the J League because I mean they they did start in Nagasaki. I found this out from from this very article. I didn't know about that. Well, so they've moved to obviously they've they're now Cerezo Osaka. Well, so it's a long story again. Because so how time. did that how did that happen? Was it was there any controversy? And it does this sort of thing go on all the time in Japan? In Cerezo Osaka, there's no controversy whatsoever. The company name Yanma was based in Nagasaki, but the team is based in Osaka and they became a J-League team and they took the name Cerezo Osaka. But uh, there are controversies and play teams have moved around. Uh, Yomiuri were based in Tokyo and decided to move to Kawasaki uh, about 15 years or so ago. It became Kawasaki Verdi and then uh, they uh, basically moved back to Tokyo and became Tokyo Verdi 1969. Uh, sometimes shortened to Tokyo Verdi 69, but that was another story too. And now they're just plain old Tokyo Verdi, and uh, some of they've lost a few fans and gained a few fans, and because they've basically moved around a little bit. And the funny thing is that until the J League started, and even at the start of the J League, they were the biggest team in the country. 
So uh, basically, that was a bit like Manchester United moving from Manchester to Liverpool and then back to Manchester. So no, that it does happen. It does yeah. happen. But uh, in Cerezo's case, now you got the wrong end of the stick there. Oh, I see. <laughs> you got the so, wrong end of the stick. <laughs> but then again, what about what about this? We're talking about stories here. What about the Yokohama Flugel story? I mean, to be honest, I don't know a lot about the Flugels. That was a tragedy. We could yeah. do a whole vidcast podcast on the Yokohama Flugels alone. Uh, basically, they uh, they were a great team. Yokohama two teams, Marinos and Flugels. Uh, Flugels sponsors basically pulled out in the end, um, and the team started to lose uh, money and uh, decided that they were going to fold. Um, in the end, they uh, it was a, it was a, well. You read the story and yeah, Jay we'll find out all about it. Three, but they lost the sponsors and they went out of business. The J League finished at the end of December. They were literally out of business then. They still went on to the Emperor's Cup final on January the 1st and won the game without sponsors. Sponsors taped over their shirts and the last game, I mean, was like, oh, legendary. And now Yokohama Marinos are known as Yokohama F Marinos and the F in oh, Marinos the is the Flugels. Oh, didn't I know didn't that. know. He's not a lot, oh, you know. Well, you know, I had my own ideas about what F stood for, but I'm Indeed. not going to discuss that right here and, and now. And coincidentally, Daniel Jones, who wrote that article from Toronto, Canada, hmm. will be in this very office in oh. about four hours. Oh, Daniel okay. Jones is visiting. Uh, we'll say hello to Daniel later. See, howdy. Do they say that in Canada? No, that's Texas, mate. Oh, okay. Well, near enough. Right continent. And you so, were talking about the, the whole advertising, the, the lack of a sponsor on the Flugel shirt. Which brings me on to Barcelona. Barca. That was a very tenuous link, wasn't it? But, <laughs> But yeah, Barca. You've got you've got Barca in um, the this magazine, which is all about Japanese football. Explain. Wow. Well, FIFA World Cup, game, uh, as it's uh, called, the uh, Toyota Cup uh, until recently. Now it's the FIFA Club World Cup, was held in Japan in December 2011, and of course Barcelona came along and stuffed everybody. Uh, although set Neymar of Santos there uh, did uh, do his best to get in on the act. Uh, the, the Japanese team, of course, was represented by uh, Kashi Reiso. And uh, any excuse to have pictures of Messi <laughs> in the magazine, eh? I mean, Don't have it. I had a, a great photographer donate those pictures to me, and uh, they're exclusive, and they're in the magazine. And Barcelona fans, you should buy a J-Soccer magazine. And, and talking about a Japanese player. Talking of great pictures, look at these, from 1997. Yeah. And it's a real blast from the past, is this... Um, some of your own pictures that you've indeed, stored over the indeed. years? Indeed. Back in November 1997, Japan beat Iran 3-2 in a playoff for the 1998 World Cup. They scored a golden goal, remember those? Hmm. And uh, I was there supporting Japan and taking my own pictures and I asked JFA permission to use them and they were there. So we got some classic old pictures there of Kazu, Nanami, Ihara, Nakata there. Nakata went on to play for Bolton Wanderers, which is a link to you owe me H, isn't it? Uh -huh, <laughs> yes, but we've talked about him enough, I think, so we'll, uh, we'll move on. In fact, they um, have a shirt right behind us. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, look. And there's uh, Inamoto. And there's uh, Miyamoto Suniyasu right behind you. If, you. if you get your little big head out of the way, that's a... Uh, little big head. That's a Red, <laughs> Red Bull Salzburg Miyamoto shirt there. Mm. Right, so uh, I think that just about wraps it up. But uh, one thing I'd like to ask you, this price is going to stay the same, isn't it? Because this is a... Old magazine now? Yes, Japan. Oh, we'll be J soon. Soccer Magazine issue yeah. 1, 2 and 3 are available at 600 yen per piece. And what's this about 571 yen? Is, is that a misprint? That's the VAT, mate. Oh, that's you the know, VAT? Just, well, you know, in England, uh, uh, the uh, VAT is included in all the places, right? So the VAT... In America, is each it? state has its own VAT. But the VAT is 571 yen. No, that's the price of That's the, the price without that's the VAT. the price without VAT. Yeah, so I was going to say. 5%. I was going to say, that seems quite ridiculous. Consumption but. tax. So, All right, so I think we should leave it. Leave so, it. I'll tell you what, Joe, I've got a special offer for watchers right. of this video, vidcast, podcast. Issue 3, 600 yen. Issue... Uh, one, 600 yen, issue two, 600 yen, 1,800 yen, add a bit of postage around the world, let's say 500 yen for postage, that's 2,300 yen. How about all three issues of J Soccer Magazine, and I'll send you the PDFs, Wow. 1,500 yen, all in. I bid 2,000 yen. 2,000 yen, you can, you got them, no, 1,500 right. yen. <laughs> well, I haven't got the money on me, so we'll have to cancel that bid. But um, yes, it's been nice chatting about, about this particular magazine 
and uh, we've obviously we've already spoken about uh, the forthcoming magazine, which is slightly more expensive. 980 yen, but it's well much worth it. better and bigger and more available. Uh, if you'd like to take advantage of that 1500 yen for all three offer, uh, just give me a mail at alan at jsoccer.com, A L A N at jsoccer.com, or um, follow me on Twitter. And while at we're doing jsoccer magazine, and while we're doing gratuitous plugs, I think I should plug my website, uh, www.thelooscannon.co.uk. The Loose Cannon. That's me. .co.uk. That's me, amongst other things. Right. Bye, Lingo.